Good evening, everybody. Jessica and Diego. Hello, teacher. Good evening. How are you? Is everything okay? Yes, okay. Excellent. Yes, okay. I'm happy to hear that. Ciro just joined us. Hello, Ciro. Hi, teacher. How are you? Doing great. Thank you very much. Thank you for okay. being here. Thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, we have a class right now. We better start. And I'm going to start sharing the screen with you. Let's begin. There it is. Can you see the screen I am sharing? Yes, teacher. Excellent. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Welcome. This is Inglés Intermedio, Modulo 3. And that's me, Ivan Doñan, at your service once again. This is Intermediate 3, Session 14, and today is September 27th, 2022, or 2022, as you prefer. Let's take a look. Here's what we're going to do. First, we're going to have a review, okay, of the content we studied yesterday. And the content from yesterday was on real conditional sentences. You had some homework, and we're going to check that homework, but first, we need to go through the information one more time. Okay, so by the end of this class, participants will learn and understand the use of unreal conditional sentences with if clauses. That's the lesson objective. So um, this is good because it's going to be a review and also it's going to give some time to the rest of your classmates to join the session. Okay, so let's take a look. Present unreal conditional. Dan likes fast cars, but he doesn't have one. He wants to have a Ferrari, but he doesn't have a Ferrari. Why not? because he doesn't have enough money. Ferraris are expensive. Fast cars in general are very expensive. So let's take a look. If he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Now, I'm going to ask you the question. Let's see, I'm going to ask Diego. What about Dan here? Does he have the money to buy a fast car? Or anybody? Does he have the money to buy a fast car? What do you think? No participants today. What's going on? Okay, Ciro, does he have the money to buy a fast car? Yes. Does he? I did, I did buy a, a fast car. Okay, but the question is, does this person, you have Dan, right? Dan likes fast cars, but he doesn't have one. He doesn't have enough money. So the sentence is, if he had the money, he would buy a fast car. A fast car, sorry. So um, does Dan have the money to buy a fast car? Yeah, yes, he said I, I, He has the money. Yes. Okay, in reality, Dan doesn't have the money. Because this is a hypothetical situation. When you say, if he had the money, you mean, si él tuviera el dinero. He would buy a fast car. Se compraría un auto veloz. But the reality is, you can see it here, and I'm going to zoom in. He doesn't have enough money. That means he can't buy a fast car. Maybe he can buy a Toyota. He can buy a Hyundai. He can buy, I don't know, a Honda, a Mitsubishi, but not a Ferrari. That's too expensive. That costs a lot of money. So when you say, if he had the money, this is only a hypothetical situation. It's not real. It doesn't reflect reality. It's the opposite of reality. So usually had is past, but in this sentence, have is not past. It's the present. If he had the money means if he had the money now, but he doesn't have it. So conditional sentences basically have two parts. I want you to take a look. First, there is a hypothetical condition, and then there is an imaginary result, okay? In the hypothetical condition, you have to use if, then the subject, and the verb in the past. Now, be very careful. 
Este if es el que nos señala cuando vamos a ocupar el verbo en pasado. ¿Ok? If, when you see the if, you know, past simple. That's next. Then in the other clause, in the other part of the sentence, you need a subject and you can use would, could, and also might is possible. And after that, a verb in base form. Why? Because would and could are model auxiliaries. And if you remember section four from this level, uh, when you have a model auxiliary, the verb that follows has to be in base form. That's a rule, okay? So let's see some examples. Well, this is more like uh, structural examples. You use if, then the subject could be I, you, he, she, it, we, or they. After that, you have to use a verb in past form, like had, knew, lived. You can also use it in negative form. And the negative form is the negative of past simple. Didn't have, didn't know, didn't live, etc. If you are using the verb be, you can use where. It doesn't really matter if the subject is I, he, she, or it. You can use where, no problem. Where is formal. If you want to sound a bit informal, you can use was, but only with I, he, she, and it. Then you have could, which is the past of can. In the imaginary result, you can use the subjects, I, you, he, she, it, we, and they, and then would or could. Would, negative form, wouldn't. Could, negative form, couldn't. And you can also use might. It's possible to use might. And after that, a verb in base form. That's the structure, okay? So this is part one of the review. Let's take a look at the second part. Now, this is what I was mentioning just a moment ago, the verb be. The verb being past has two forms. There is was and there is where, okay? Two forms, was and where. But in this case, because we're using an unreal sentence, you can say, I, you use if, right? I, he, she, it, you can say was, or if you want, you can say if he, she, he, sorry, I, he, she, or it, where, okay? ¿Qué tenemos que recordar acá? Este no es el pasado. Solamente es la forma del pasado, pero no es el pasado. No nos estamos refiriendo al pasado. Nos referimos al presente de manera imaginaria, de manera hipotética, de manera que es lo contrario a la realidad. Por ejemplo, if I were you. Dice, teacher, pero que no con I va was. Si sí, está en past simple, sí, pero en este caso estamos hablando de unreal conditionals. Usted le puede, puede ocupar perfectamente where e incluso es más formal. If I were you, si yo fuera tú. Pero eso es lo contrario a la realidad. Yo soy yo, no soy tú, ¿verdad? Entonces, hipotéticamente hablando, si yo fuera tú, if I were you, es una frase muy útil para dar consejos. Mira, si yo fuera tú, yo haría esto y aquello. If I were you, I would do this and that. So you have some examples. It's not a very nice place. If I were you, I wouldn't go there. Si yo fuera tú, yo no iría ahí. Second example. It would be nice if the weather was better. You can also say, it would be nice if the weather were better. This is more formal. Third example, what will Tom do if he were here? ¿Qué haría Tom si estuviera aquí? You can also say, what will Tom do if he was here? But again, where is more formal. This only occurs with the verb be, okay? Very important. Then you have some more examples. Again, remember, there's a hypothetical condition. You use if plus the subject plus the verb in past form. And the imaginary result, you use a subject plus would or could or might and the verb in base form. Examples, if Mike had the money, he would buy a car. That's the thing. If he had the money, he would buy a car. Second example, if we didn't have six children, 
we would have more money. ¿Mm? Si no tuviéramos seis hijos, tendríamos más dinero. If I could cook, I wouldn't order food every day. Si yo pudiera cocinar, no ordenaría comida todos los días. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, I'm sorry, there's an extra comma that's not supposed to be there. Okay, there you go. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, comma, she would be happier. Si Ellen no tuviera tantos problemas, sería más feliz. And the last one, if we had a car, we could travel more. Si tuviéramos un auto, podríamos viajar más. Now let's analyze the sentences. When you say, if Mike had the money, he would buy a car. Okay, but in reality, he doesn't have the money, so he will not buy a car. Second sentence, if we didn't have six children, we would have more money. But in reality, we have six children, so we don't have much money. If, sorry, if I could cook, I wouldn't order food every day. But in reality, I can't cook. That's why I order food every day. If Ellen didn't have so many problems, she would be happier. But in reality, she has a lot of problems. So she isn't very happy. And finally, if we had a car, we could travel more. But in reality, we don't have a car. So we can't travel much. We can only take the bus or a taxi, etc. Finally, something to know is that normally you begin with a hypothetical condition and you finish with an imaginary result. But this is not necessarily the order to follow. If Mike had the money, he would buy a car. Okay, that's good. But you can also say Mike would buy a car if he had the money. You can begin with the result and you can finish with the condition. And the sentence is okay. Both sentences are okay. All right, that's important. One more thing to remember, apostrophe D means would. It's the contracted form of would. Some examples, I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I'd tell you. That means I would tell you. Si supiera la respuesta, te la diría. It's raining, so we can't go out. We'd get wet if we went out. We'd get means we would get. Está lloviendo, no podemos salir. Nos mojaríamos si saliéramos. Emma loves living in the city. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Ella no sería feliz si viviera en el campo. If you didn't have a job, what would you do? Si no tuvieras trabajo, ¿qué harías? And finally, I'm sorry I can't help you. I would help if I could. Lo siento, que no puedo ayudarte. Te ayudaría si pudiera, pero no puedo. So that's the end of the review. So yesterday you had some homework. Okay, we're going to check today. All right, we did this exercise together, but um, it seems uh, some of the participants didn't finish and that's okay. It was a little bit difficult. So um, that's why you could complete it at home. And today we're going to check answers. So we're going to start. Uh, the first one was an example. So I'm not going to ask. I don't know the answer. If I knew the answer, I will tell you. What about number two? I need a volunteer, please. Jessica. I have a car, a car travel very, very much. It is, uh, didn't have a car. That is correct. I have a car. I couldn't travel very much if I didn't have a car. Tengo vehículo. No podría viajar mucho si no tuviera vehículo. Very good. Thank you, Jessica. Number three, volunteer, please. Who wants to participate? Show me you did your homework. Uh -huh. Rebecca. I don't want to go out. If I want to go out, I go. Correct. I don't want to go out. If I wanted to go out, I'd go. Huh? No quiero salir. Si quisiera salir, iría. 
pero como no quiero, no voy a ir. So, if I wanted to go out, I would go. That is correct. Thank you, Rebecca. Number four. Who wants to try number four? Please, raise your hand. Your digital online hand. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Lo peor que va a pasar es que le voy a decir cómo es la forma correcta. Y va a aprender. Uh -huh. Who wants to try? Mm -hmm. Number four goes. Okay, Rodrigo Antonio. We don't have a key. If we had a key, we could get into the house. Correct. Very good. We don't have a key. If we had a key, we could get into the house. Si tuviéramos la llave, podríamos entrar a la casa. Thank you, Rodrigo. That's very good. Great. Number five. Volunteer, please. Let's do this. Number five, please. Number five. Come on. Let's participate. Jessica. Okay. Jessica wants to participate. I uh, know. Mm -hmm. Sigo. Yeah, yeah, please, please, please. Sorry. I'm not hungry. I hope have something to eat. Is well hungry. Okay. All right. Good. Uh, very good. Let's just practice the pronunciation. You say, I'm not hungry. I would. Okay. This word is important. That's the model auxiliary we're using. I would. La pronunciación ahí, ¿verdad? I would have something to eat if I were hungry. Como habíamos explicado, también puede ocupar was, pero eso sería menos formal, ¿verdad? Lo más formal y académico es ocupar were en oraciones como estas, que son las unreal conditionals. Ahora bien, si usted está hablando del pasado, si me está contando lo que sucedió ayer y tiene que ocupar el verb bien pasado, entonces sí, si el sujeto es I, he, she, or it, Ahí sí, ocupe was. No me voy a ocupar where porque estaría equivocado. Pero en este tipo de oraciones condicionales, ahí sí ocupe where para estar más seguro y porque es más formal también. Very good. Thank you, Jessica. Number six. Volunteers, please. Who wants to try? I have many students connected. Let's see. There is Sandra, Rodrigo, Daniel, Marvin, Joseph, Erasmo Perla, Surma Beatriz. There's Navy, Maritza. Come on, <laughs> let's participate. Who wants to try? Sandra, okay, Sandra, number six. Hey, good evening, este, Sue and George, her work. She would she wouldn't do it if she if she didn't enjoy it. That is correct. Very good. Sue enjoys her work. She wouldn't do it if she didn't enjoy it. No lo haría si no lo disfrutara. Pero resulta que sí lo disfruta. Entonces, por eso hace su trabajo. Very good. Thank you, Sandra. Excellent. Number seven. Who wants to participate? Let's give it a try. Sulma. Good evening. Good evening. Um, he can speak any foreign language. Foreign. If sorry, foreign. Foreign. Mm -hmm. Foreign language. If he can't speak a foreign language. Foreign. Foreign language. Maybe he wouldn't. He would. He would get a better job. Okay, but let's take a look, Sulma. Remember that in the if clause, the condition, you have to use the verb in past. So, what is the past of can? I don't remember. Okay, no problem, don't worry. Um, who can help Sulma here? Can echo una manita aquí a Sulma? Vamos a ver. Good. Good. Uh, that was Rebecca, I believe. Yeah, that's right. If he could speak a foreign language, maybe he would get a better job. 
¿verdad? Como dice acá, ¿verdad? He can't speak any foreign languages. Dice, no puede hablar ningún idioma extranjero. Puede español, pero le falta en inglés, le falta en francés, le falta en alemán, en italiano, todo eso. Entonces, if he could speak a foreign language, si él pudiera, ¿verdad? Hablar un idioma extranjero, maybe he would get a better job. Tal vez conseguiría un trabajo mejor. ¿Ok? That's the thing. Entonces, mucho ojo en esto. El if siempre nos da la señal en este tipo de eh, oraciones que son unreal conditionals. El if es el que nos dice el siguiente verbo que va ahí, va a ir en past simple. ¿Verdad? Past simple. Esa es la cuestión. Ok, so, uh, thank you. Number eight. You don't try hard enough. Rodrigo Daniel. And then Ciro will get number nine. Okay, Rodrigo Daniel, number eight, zero, number nine. You don't try hard enough. If you try hard, you will have more success. If you try harder, you will have more success. Very good. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Ciro, mira, number nine, please. Okay. I have a lot to do today. If I have so much to do with Go out. Ajá, pero cuidado. Si se fija, aquí dice, I have a lot, of, a lot to do today. Tengo muchas cosas que hacer. Si luego me dice, if I had so much to do, but the reality is, yes, you have a lot to do. So you have to tell me the opposite of that. Normally, the opposite will be negative. I haven't. Um, I haven't. No, past simple. Remember, with past simple, we use this. Didn't have. Aha, uh aha, -huh, uh -huh, that's right. I have a lot to do today. If I didn't have so much to do, we could get out. Si no tuviera tanto por hacer, podría salir. Pero no puedo. ¿Por qué? Por lo que dice aquí primero. I have a lot to do today. Tengo mucho que hacer. Si no tuviera tanto que hacer, podría salir. Okay. Very good. How many people are there here today? We have uh, 13 participants. Okay, we can work in groups. Let's see. We're going to do this exercise. Now look, this exercise is a bit more difficult. Okay. ¿Por qué es más difícil? Porque aquí todas eran if clauses. Todas iban con if, if, if. Si se fijan, if. Luego aquí va if, if, y así. Así que todas van en past simple. Pero en este ejercicio ya está más difícil porque tienen que ver cuál de las dos partes es la que va a llevar el past simple y cuál va a llevar el would y el verbo. En realidad está fácil, solo vean, dice if, ¿verdad? El if nos da la señal de que lo que sigue va en past simple. ¿Ok? Si no va el if, como en este caso, en la número dos, entonces no van a ocupar past simple. Van a ocupar would y el verbo en forma base. Ahora, ¿qué es lo más complicado de este ejercicio? Que ustedes tienen que utilizar la lógica y ver la situación. Algunas veces van a ocupar la forma afirmativa y otras veces van a ocupar la forma negativa. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, ahí mucho, mucho cuidado. Vamos a trabajar en grupos un poco más grandes esta vez porque la complejidad de este ejercicio es un poco mayor. Ok. Enough Spanish. Let's speak English. Ok. So, there are uh, 12 participants. Ok. Great. I'm going to form or create the breakout rooms now. Maybe before that, we should do exercise one and number two. Ok. Let's see. Vamos a hacer el uno y el dos primero para que quede de ejemplo. Who wants to try number one? A ver, ¿quién, ¿quién se anima? You have to use the information in parentheses, by the way. Uh -huh. ¿Quién nos puede ayudar? Ok, Maritza. And then Rodrigo. If have If have... mm -hmm. No, teacher, no. Okay, okay, no, no problem, no hay problema, no hay problema. Pero veamos, eh, podemos hacer esto junto. Veamos, Maritza. Hay que ocupar he, porque siempre va el sujeto. Sería if he, y luego vamos a ocupar este verbo have, pero en pasado. 
¿Cuál es el pasado de have? Has. Has es el presente de la tercera persona. He, she, it. Pero el pasado uh -huh. es el mismo para todos los sujetos. ¿Cuál sería? Um, not it. No, no, problem. no problem. No problem. En este caso tenemos, eh, veamos. Rodrigo, eh, ¿quería participar también? Let's see. Rodrigo, do you have the answer? If, if he, he had. If he had. That's right. If he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Si él tuviera el dinero, se compraría un auto veloz. Very good. Okay, thank you, Maritza and Rodrigo, for participating. Let's do number two. Vamos a hacer la número dos y luego nos vamos a los breakout rooms. Okay, who wants to try number two? Hannah likes living in the city. And then you have she, not be. Ahí está, está en negativo, ¿verdad? Ya sabemos. Vemos más fácil ahí. If she lived in the country. What do you have? A volunteer, please. Sulma. No sé si me equivoco. Hannah likes living in, the, in a city. Uh, she, she didn't, she didn't uh, was or where. Y lo demás, if, if she lived in the country. Ajá, vaya, pero cuidado acá. Veamos, Sulma. Eh, solamente tenemos que fijarnos bien en esto. Aquí tenemos if. Este if es el que nos indica que el siguiente verbo va a ir en past simple, como está acá. If she lived in the country. Significa que esta es la condición. La otra parte es el resultado de la condición. Así que no vamos a ocupar past simple, sino que vamos a ocupar would, y si es negativo, wouldn't, y luego el verbo en forma base. Ya vimos acá, se nos está indicando que es negativo, así que vamos a ocupar wouldn't. ¿Cómo nos quedaría? Sería she. Uh -huh. Who can help me? Wouldn't be. I'm sorry? Uh, she wouldn't be. Wouldn't be. Okay. She wouldn't be. Uy, se me quedó una palabra ahí. Lo siento, la vamos a poner. Happy. Okay. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Okay. I'm sorry. Me había ido una palabra ahí que no estaba. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. No sería feliz si viviera en el campo. Son los mismos ejemplos que hemos estudiado, ¿verdad? Esto es lo que vamos a hacer acá. Desapareció el puntero. Ah, aquí está ya. Okay, she wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Okay, tenemos esto. Vamos a hacer los breakout rooms, pero van a ser un poquito más grandes. Van a ser de cuatro participantes, porque vamos a estarnos echando la mano el uno al otro. Here we go. Let's begin. We're going to create three breakout rooms. Okay, room one. We have Jessica Rosales, Maria Ayala, Marvin Joseph and Rodrigo Daniel. Room two, we have Ciro Mira, Maritza Guadalupe, Rebeca Estefania, and Zulma Perez. Room three, we have Diego Anthony, Nady Ibis, Rodrigo Antonio, and Sandra Patricia. I'm going to form the breakout rooms now. Please join your groups. Eh, me puede volver a agregar, por favor, me equivoqué de, de presionar la otra botón. Um, perdón, eh, Rodrigo, ¿me, ¿me comentaba? Sí, disculpe, es que presioné el botón equivocado y no pude entrar al, al, al cuarto. Ah, ok. Ok, no problem. Gracias. Con Diego Anthony me tocaba. Gracias. Eh, 
Eh, Rodrigo, puede entrar a la sala 3, no hay problema. Eh, le di entrar, pero me mandaba a la 1 y después me sacó automáticamente. Si prueba a entrar en este momento, veamos. Por favor, gracias. Ahorita me aparece que está en la para entrar a la sala 3, solamente como que no ha entrado usted. No sé si le sale la opción para entrar. Ahorita no. Ah, no me aparece. Vaya, vamos. Uy. Vaya, lo voy a asignar a la sala 1 y luego lo voy a cambiar a la sala 3 nuevamente. Ajá, en pasaporte. I, ajá. Uh -huh. I ball, I ball, go to Italia. Mira, sí, ¿verdad? Nosotros pongámosla como esa opción y el que la corrija, va. Sí. ¿Qué dice usted, Rodrigo? ¿Qué dice el teacher? ¿Qué <risa> teacher <risa> Ok, ¿cómo, cómo la número tres sería, ¿verdad? Number three. Vamos iniciando. Uh -huh. Sí, sí, no hay problema. Ok, ¿cómo sería? If I wanted to learn Italian. I want to go to Italia. I would go to Italy. Go okay. to Italy. Would go. Would go I Italy. Go. I mm -hmm. would go to Italy. Ok, nada Italy. más eh, practiquemos la pronunciación, ¿verdad? De uh, would. Good. Would go Good. to Italy. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. Yeah, that's Good. the right answer. Si usted dice, if I Good. wanted to learn Italian, I would go to Italy. So, si yo quisiera aprender italiano, iría a Italia. Okay, yes. that's, that's right. Okay, very good. What about uh, number four? Como dice, I didn't tell Helen what happened. She'd be angry. If she's next, if she, she knew. if she knew, that's right. She'd be angry if she knew. Se enojaría o se pondría molesta, verdad? Si le dijera. That's right. Very good. Okay, please continue. Okay, síganse apoyando entre los cuatro, verdad? Para encontrar la respuesta correcta. I'm going Gracias. to go into a different room. See you later. See you later, teacher. If you want. If you Win. Win. Sería, sería el pasado, ¿verdad? Sí. Yes. You won. If you won. Ajá, you won. El pasado, el, el ganar, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Correct. Uh -huh. Quedaría, what would you do if you won a lot of money? ¿Qué harías yeah. si ganaras mucho dinero? Right. Mm -hmm. The past of one, one. Ajá, the past of win is one. De nuevo, la clave está en el if. Cuando ustedes ven if, ajá, ya saben que el siguiente va en past simple. 
verb in four basic. You use, uh, okay. you use the verb in past form, okay? Y en la otra okay. es que van a ocupar would y el verbo en forma base. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, very okay. good. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Um, can, can, can you help me with number five? No. Number five, do you have number five? Yes. Okay. If we have. Aha. Uh -huh. That's right. If we had a map, I could show you where I live. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Very good. Okay, I'm going to join another breakout room. See you later. See you later. See you later. And... I would not. I don't, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. I don't know. Good. I would not know. I would not. I will know. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So number 11, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I don't know anything about cars. If my car broke down, I would don't not know. know. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. know what to do. Uh -huh. No sabría qué hacer. Toca llamar al mecánico de emergencia. Mira, vení. Okay. I wouldn't know what to do. Si mi, mi, mi auto se arruinara, no sabría qué hacer. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what to do. No sabría, right? I wouldn't know. Okay, very good. Uh, you're in number 11, you work very fast. What about number 10? Can you read number 10, please? 10. Quiero ver. I am no, I, I am not going to take the job. I would take it if, if were better, if were better. Um, better. Pero le faltó ahí porque dice the salary. Ese es el sujeto. If. Uh, if where the salary better. Al revés. If the salary. Was better. better. If was the better. salary was better. También se puede. If the salary were better. Y sería incluso yeah, más formal. Uh -huh. Salary were better. Ok. Very good. Bueno, entonces los dejo que terminen la 12. Voy a ir con los otros compañeros que iban un poquito más atrás. Ok, see you in a few minutes. La 9. Hello. Hello, teacher. You're in number 9. Bye, <laughs> teacher. Ayúdenos en la número 8. Ah, número 8. Ok. Si vivimos más cerca de Miami, we will go there more often. Uh -huh. If we lived, el pasado de live, ¿verdad? If we lived closer to Miami, we would go there more often. Uh -huh. Si viviéramos más cerca de Miami, ¿verdad? Pero vivimos lejos, así que no podemos. Ok. Good. What about number nine? I'm sorry, I've got to go now. It's, it's. It would be nice if you had more time. Correct. It would be nice if you had more time. Sería bueno o sería bonito que tuviera más tiempo. Lástima que ya te vas. Okay, it would be nice if you had more time. Very good. What about number 10? See number 10. I'm not going to say so. I say if salary error. If the salary? B. 
be better. Ah, but look, it reads if. If indicates that the verb should be in past form. If the salary okay. was better. Was better. Or where? Where better. Uh-huh. That's right. Así que queda. I'm not going to take the job. I would take it if the salary was better. Oh, I would take it if the salary were better. Okay. Okay. I'm going to uh, go into a different room now. See you in a few minutes. If you could change one day in the world, one, you, what you? Oh. What? Do what would you go chance? What would you change? Chance. Uy, está silenciado. Okay, it's a question. So, uh, what do you say? What would you change? What would you change? Correct. Okay, es una pregunta. Primero va al auxiliar. What would you change? That is mm -hmm. correct. Very good. If you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? Si tú pudieras cambiar una cosa del mundo, ¿qué cambiarías? Okay. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. We're going to stop and I'm going to um, end the breakout rooms now. Thank you. Okay, everybody, we're going to stop working in the breakout rooms now. See you in one minute. Twenty seconds. Okay. Let's take a look. Number one, if uh, he had the money, he would buy a fast car. Number two, Hannah lives, likes, I'm sorry, living in the city. She wouldn't be happy if she lived in the country. Number three, who wants to participate? Please raise your hand. Who wants to try? Come on, volunteers. No volunteers. Okay, Maria Ayala, number three, and Ciro, number four, and Sandra, number five. Okay, so Maria. Ahorita, la number three is, is I want her to, to learn Italian, I will go, go to it, Italian. To Italy. To, to Italy. Mm -hmm. okay. If I wanted to learn Italian, I would go to Italy. That is correct. Italy. Thank you, Italy. Maria. That's correct. Yes. So um, the next one, Ciro, number four. I didn't tell Helen what happened. She'd be angry. If, if she knew a lot of money. Uh, ah, okay. If she knew a lot of money, what is that? <laughs> no, it's, she'll be angry if she knew, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, she knew, she knew. 
Ok, se cruzaron las preguntas ahí. Ok, I didn't tell Ellen what happened. She'd be angry if she knew. Ok, thank you very much. Ok, number five, Sandra. Um, is, if we had a map, I could show you where I live. If we had a map, I could show you where I live. Ok, very good. All right, uh, number six. Tengo a María y a Sandra levantando la manita. No, no sé si... es que yo me, yo me equivoqué. No, se teacher. No, se nos olvida bajar la mano. No, no hay problema. Sí, problema. perdón. No problem, no problem. Ok, solo que me confundo, me quedo. No sé si sí. le quedó la mano levantada o si quiere volver a participar. No se preocupe, no se preocupe. Zulma, number six. Uh, what would you do if you won? If you won a lot of money. Yes. A lot of money. What would you do if you won a lot of money? Good. Very good. Thank you. Number seven. Rebecca. It's not a very good hotel. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. Correct. I wouldn't stay there if I were you. So, yo no me quedaría ahí si fuera vos. Very good. Thank you, Rebecca. Number eight. Who wants to try number eight, please? Number eight. Sin miedo, sin miedo. Vamos. Zulma. And then zero, number nine. If we live closer to Miami. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And the rest of the sentence. <laughs> uh, we would go there more often. Yeah, thank you. If we lived closer to Miami, we would go there more often. Thank you very much. Uh, zero. Number nine. Nine. Uh, I'm sorry, you have to go now. If I would be. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be. It would be. Nice, nice if you that more time. Uh -huh. I'm sorry, you have to go now. It would be nice if you had more time. Sería bonito, verdad, que tuvieras más tiempo para compartir. So, it would be nice if you had more time. Thank you, Ciro. Very good. Number 10. Who wants to try number 10? Number 10, please. Number 10. Number 10. Come on. Number 10. Who's number 10? Maria Ayala. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, teacher. Don't worry. Dice, I, I'm not going to take the job. I take it if the salary. Ah, usted dijo where, where, where the salary, where it better. If the dijo, salary, what? both uh -huh. are okay. Yeah. So I'll take it if the salary were better or I'll take it if the salary was better. Las dos se pueden, solo que where es más formal. Ok, so very good. Thank you, María. Disculpe. Don't worry, don't worry. Number 11, who wants to try? We have two more. Let's do this. What about number 11? Rebeca. I don't know anything about cars. If my car broke down, I wouldn't know what to do. If my car broke down, I wouldn't know what to do. Si el auto se me arruinara, no sabría qué hacer. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rebecca. That's the correct answer. And the last one, number 12. It's a bit trickier because it's a question. So the word order is a little bit different. Who wants to try? wants to try number 12. Mm -hmm. C 
siempre la última, la que más cuesta que me participen. Ajá. Zulma, ok, Zulma and Sandra. Sorry, Sandra, <laughs> Zulma was faster. Ok, Zulma, veamos. If you could change one thing in the world, what would you change? What would you change? Correct. What would you change? That is correct. Thank you, Zulma. Ahora, si nos fijamos todos, primero ocupa would y luego you. ¿Por qué? Porque es una pregunta. What would you change? Ok, excelente. Quiero tomar foto. Tómele foto. Ahorita la pantalla, ahorita, ahorita. Gracias, ya estuvo. <risa> Igual Gracias. Se, lo, se lo voy a poner ahorita, voy a tomar una captura rápida de pantalla y se lo voy a mandar al grupo. Para que lo tengamos Gracias. todos. Ahí está. Ok, I just sent it to you. Very good. Ok, uh, before we continue. Um, there are some developments, I believe, in the platform. And some of you have some questions. Okay, en la plataforma, me parece, quiero ver que para el examen final, el final test, algunos lo estaban resolviendo ya. Aparecía, hay un problema con la parte de reading, ¿verdad? Que sería la última. Y según me parece, aún no se ha corregido el error. Entonces, para, para evitar ¿verdad? que pues, eh, pierdan esta parte, vamos bueno, a dar las respuestas prácticamente porque o sea, no puedo hacer nada. La verdad, yo tampoco tengo el reading. Así que si yo lo tuviera, se los pasaría. Lo voy a decir en inglés para ocupar el conditional. If I had it, I would give it to you. ¿Verdad? But I don't have it. Así que, ni modo. Vamos a la parte donde dice mostrar respuesta y elijan esas. Porque no tenemos otra manera. No aparece. Ya hay que contestar esto. Algunos me han expresado que les han solicitado que ya el día de hoy esté. Así que, si gustan, pues simplemente vamos con la respuesta. Que sería, number one, people communicate with one uh, another using words in body language. The second one, body language includes postures, facial expressions, and gestures. Number three, a smile can show friendliness, interest, and sometimes politeness. And number four, someone who points a finger at you like this, okay, may be angry. Esa sería la respuesta. De nuevo, Eh, normalmente no se darían, pero ya que no aparece el texto, ni modo, ¿qué vamos a hacer? Va? Tampoco va a sacar cero usted en eso. Uh, un error técnico en este caso, ¿verdad? Esperamos que se resuelva lo más pronto posible, pero en este caso, ya que ya no hay más tiempo, entonces vamos a compartir las respuestas por acá. ¿no? Ok, um, antes de continuar, ¿alguien tiene alguna duda en la plataforma? No. No, teacher. No questions. Okay, very good. Bueno, en ese caso, let's go back. Vamos a hacer un ejercicio rapidito que ya solo tenemos cinco minutos. Your turn. Complete the sentences, choose from the box and put the verb in the correct form. Okay. Veamos acá. Vamos a hacer este ejercicio de manera más espontánea. We're not going to work in the breakout rooms this time. We're going to work individually. So, complete the sentences. In the box you have, we have a bigger house. We buy a bigger house. We have some pictures on the wall. It be a little cheaper. Every day be the same. The air be cleaner. I watch it and I be bored. So you need to use the verb in yellow in the correct form to complete the sentences. So you need to, number one, choose the correct phrase. And number two, use the verb in the phrase in the correct form. Okay. Vamos a ver. Number one, I buy that jacket if... ¿Con qué lo podemos completar y cómo va a ir el verbo en ese caso? 
Ciro. Uh, I'd be a little cheaper. Uh -huh. That's the phrase. But what about the verb be? How can you uh, use it? You need to change it. I would buy that jacket if it were. Mm -hmm. well, well, well. Correct. Correct. I would buy that jacket if it were or if it was a little cheaper. That is correct. Very good. Thank you. Number two. If there was a good movie on TV tonight. Rebecca. If there was a good movie on TV tonight, I would watch it. Correct. If there was a good movie on TV tonight, I would watch it. Pero no hay nada, así que no voy a ver nada. Okay, very good. Number three. This room would be nicer if... Huh? <laughs> I need a volunteer. This room would be nicer if the air was more cooler. Uh, la lógica está muy bien, de hecho. Sí, verdad. El, la habitación sería mejor o más bonita si el aire estuviera más limpio, pero. Hay una que le queda mejor en realidad. We a a I'm sorry, uh, everybody's talking at the same time. Huh? I need <laughs> one. This room will be nicer if. Okay, Ciro. If we bought a bigger house. If we had a bigger house. Mm, probably not. A different one. We had okay. a big house. Sí, porque si no diríamos, este cuarto sería más bonito si tuviéramos una casa más grande. Bueno, tal vez, pero si tuviera una casa más grande sería una casa distinta. Navy wants to participate. Um, this room would be nice if we have some pictures on the wall. That is correct. Very good. This room would be nicer if we had some pictures on the wall. ¿verdad? Este cuarto sería más bonito o se vería mejor, estaría mejor si tuviéramos cuadros en las paredes. Pero está todo pelón, ¿verdad? No, no hay nada. Ok. That's right. What about number four? Who wants to try? Nady, again. Ok, Nady. Um... If there wasn't so much traffic, um, the air, um, the air, uh, the cleaner. I'm sorry, the, the air? The air were cleaner. Okay, careful right here, Nady. Veamos, si se fija, ya ocupamos el if clause. Después del if es que vamos a ocupar past simple. If there wasn't so much traffic. Lo que significa que la otra es la cláusula de resultado. Ahí vamos a ocupar el modal auxiliary. Entonces, ¿cómo nos quedaría? If there wasn't so much traffic, the air would would and the verb would, would be cleaner would be cleaner that's right if there wasn't so much traffic the air would be cleaner si no hubiera tanto tráfico el aire estaría más limpio okay thank you thank you very much uh, sandra is raising her hand do you want to try number five sandra um, se me olvidó <laughs> <laughs> híjole <laughs> okay, no, no problem, no problem, no problem. Voy a intentar. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
life will be boring. Mm -hmm. Life will be boring. If. if, if if was every day the same. Ok, good. Were... Pero me ha cambiado el orden de las palabras. Sería, life oh, will be if... boring if... If I... El mismo orden está bien. If, uh -huh. if, if every, every day... day were the same. Correct. Were the same. Good. Life will be boring if every day were the same. You can also say life will be boring if every day was the same. So, la vida sería aburrida si todos los días fueran iguales. Okay, good. Thank you. What about number six? Volunteers, please. Ya nos pasamos de las nueve. Terminemos esto. Okay. Number six. Lady. If I have nothing to do, I would be boring. Yes, okay. If I had nothing to do, I would be bored. That's right. Very good. Thank you, Nady. Number seven, who wants to try? Number seven, number seven, number seven, number seven. Rebecca. We could invite all our friends to stay if we have a bigger house. Mm -hmm. We could invite all our friends to stay if we had a bigger house. Pero mi casa es bien chiquita, entonces no los puedo invitar a todos. Uno, dos, lo más. So we could invite all our friends if we had a bigger house. Thank you. And the last one, number eight. Who wants to try number eight, please? Number eight. Esto todos están diciendo cuál es la que no hemos ocupado. Quiero ver. Big house. Bye. <laughs> Ajá. Ok. María Ayala. No, tengo No, no, idea. no. Ok, ok. Dice, if we have more money, Ajá. Um, we bought a big, we bought a big house. Ok, cuidado. No. Cuidado, porque aquí está el if clause. Ah, sí. Entonces el otro es el result clause. Tenemos que ocupar el modal auxiliary, que es would. Entonces, would. if we had more money. Sería we would. Uh -huh. Would has some people. We would buy. A bigger house. We would buy no, a bigger about. house. Buy. Buy, mm -hmm. a, buy a bigger house. Sí, la regla del modo es que siempre después de un modo de auxiliary va un verbo en forma base. Siempre, siempre. Entonces, sí. if we had more money, we would buy a bigger house. Si tuviéramos más dinero, compraríamos una casa más grande. Pero no tenemos, así que tenemos que quedarnos acá. Ok. Very good, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're going to finish the class here. And uh, the class will be ready for you to watch in a few minutes. So thank you and uh, have a great evening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank, thank you. you. Gracias, teacher. You're welcome.